Hey guys, I'm going over YouTube comments right now and I got this question from uh, Jagjit. Jagit. Oh man, I'm so sorry about mispronouncing your name. But essentially this is about introversion versus extroversion um, as a software developer, a software engineer and how, how this is going to affect you um, in your computer science education. So just want to read out the question so you know what the context is and then share some of my thoughts. Okay, so Jagjit <laughs> Uh, Jay <laughs> says, um, mm -hmm. uh, I kind of have an unusual question that is pretty unrelated to this. So this is for a, for a MacBook Pro review video that I did a while ago, but it is related to software development. I am currently a freshman computer science student about to start in August. And I was wondering whether a primarily extroverted person, although I can be introverted sometimes, like myself would fit in well in a, in a software engineering role. Also, do you sometimes feel that the work is mundane, even, even if one were to work at top companies like Google, Amazon, etc.? I personally love the challenge of coding, but these are just two of the fears that I have. I would appreciate a response of any sort. So, okay, so actually it looks like there's, there's uh, two questions in here, but just wanted to address some of, some of this stuff. So the question about introversion versus extroversion and whether or not you know, you're going to feel comfortable in a, in a computer science um, education context, going, going to, um, to college for, for, uh, for getting a computer science degree. So, um, well, okay, so a couple of thoughts here. Um, I am actually wondering if introversion and extroversion you know, really like they're okay. So I was about to say whether or not they really exist, but um, that that's really not what I meant. This is more about like what, you know, what is the exact definition of that? Um, I would say that in my past, I have been, you know, when I grew up, I was an extremely introverted person. I was, um, um, you know, actually, um, I, I would just say, at some point, I just got scared off off social interaction in some way. I just became um, very, very shy. And um, you know, at when I was maybe um, um, like seventeen or, or or eighteen, I it was um, a really big problem for me. So I worked on overcoming that. And and actually, for a while, um, I felt I was kind of going the other, the opposite direction. And all of a sudden. Um, felt very, very extroverted in that sense, you know, almost like completely flipped, flipped that around. And I feel like now I'm, I'm just more comfortable with, with who I am or sort of how I'm wired that way. And I'm probably somewhere in the middle or like going back between, between the two, you know, I, I'll, I have no problem like going to a conference and um, just chatting up strangers there and, and, you know, making new friends there. But at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm actually super happy just sitting down on the couch and reading a book for a couple of hours. And that can be absolute like bliss. Right. So, um, so it, it's kind of hard to really, um, to really like narrow down this concept. And, and I'm sure there, maybe there's some, some scientific definition of this. Um, actually a really good book that, that I would recommend that you read if you're thinking about these things is, um, is called quiet by Susan Cain. That was recommended to me by a coworker. And uh, I had a good time reading this book. Like, I think she's really, uh, she's, she's, um, she just ex talked about some things that, that I saw in myself and I saw in others and, um, just got like a better understanding of, you know, what introversion versus extroversion version um, is, is about and how how these concepts are are commonly understood. Now, you know, to your question, because I feel like I, you know, I was talking about sort of my experience, because um, uh, just I wanted to share some background so that you know that I can, I can actually speak to this. So um, well, I would say that for for computer science education, a lot of times, you know, people will self-select, um, self-select, and maybe they're more on the, the introversion uh, end of the spectrum, right? Where they can be happy sitting down in front of a couple of books or spending like five hours in front of a computer screen and typing, typing in code and building something cool. And they can get a kick out of that. And maybe they, they don't need a lot of, a lot of social interaction um, to do that. 
And uh, some people are just on the other hand, and they, they absolutely can't do that. And maybe they, they're going to self-select and, and go for another job or another environment where, you know, there's less quiet time and there's less focus time. And um, there's, there's just more, um, just more constant social interaction. On the other hand, I would say that the myth of the, you know, the, the kind of uh, like sit in your cave, you know, sit in your dim cave, sit in your dim cave kind of hacker that's just, you know, coding stuff on his own all the time and like this genius that's sort of recluse and, and, and doing amazing stuff. That's not how, how software development actually is done. Um, you know, you got to be able to work with the team. A lot of it is about about communication, explaining your ideas with others, getting feedback from other people, standing in front of a whiteboard, just kicking around ideas, going, you know, doing the, going through meetings, um, hiring other people, um, helping your your peers and your colleagues to succeed. And, you know, there's just so much, so much of it that will make you successful is is about social interaction and is um, is about maybe being, you know, moving more towards the, the extroverted end of the spectrum. But uh, what I personally found is that it was, um, it was never sort of a crazy environment where I didn't feel comfortable, but I actually like felt, felt really good. And I actually felt like I fit right in and I was able to, you know, understand the people who were super, super introverted because I had been there and I was able to, to, um, you know, make, strike up a connection with them because I, I, I felt like I actually understood, you know, that they weren't mean and they weren't, uh, trying to, to, to ignore people, but maybe they were just a little bit shy. Right. And so, so, um, it, and, and at the same time, I felt like, you know, those people were more, more on the shy end. They, they appreciated that um, I was able to, to bring them into a conversation, for example, or just, you know, sit down next to them and strike up a conversation. And, um, so that can be, you know, that, that's like a really valuable asset. You know, I don't, I don't know how extroverted you feel. Um, and I'm sure it could, you know, like if you have someone who's very introverted, someone who's very extroverted, and it, it could just be that they're not getting along like super well. But um, in my experience, like also going through computer science education, um, it, it's never been an environment where I felt uh, completely at odds with the world. And um, I don't think you will either, you know, um, the, definitely like I have some friends who, who would, I, I would say are, are very, very extroverted. Um, in, in the sense that they are uh, just thriving on, on having, you know, just a lot of like loud stuff going on and like just, just the, the party animals really. And, and I, not so much anymore, um, but uh, they also, I think they also enjoyed that part of their education. And now they're also all doing, you know, really well in, in their jobs usually because they they have that ability to reach out to people and to make these new, new connections and to, um, to engage people, right? And so I think this is a really valuable asset. Now, of course, I, you know, this question, your question seems to be more about like, you know, how, how will I fit in? And um, I, don't, I don't think you'll, you'll have a problem with that. You know, maybe you'll actually like really enjoy it because it, this could be your superpower, you know, in an environment where most people are more on, on the, like the more introverted end of the spectrum. Um, if, if you're the odd duck and you can just go up to people and strike up a conversation and you can, you know, make these connections and connect different circles of friends, um, that's actually great. And people will appreciate that. You just don't, you gotta just make sure that you're not an asshole about it. And, and you know, um, because it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, everyone else is a nerd, and I'm like, you know, the bro bro grammar uh, kind of kind of cliche person, and I, I feel like that's terrible because it it just you know there's it, it creates this rift, and and one isn't better than the other. It's just you know it's a spectrum, and people people just have preferences. And um, for anyone who's actually feeling like they're super introverted, I would I would consider you know. Um, um, actually trying to, to see if you can if you can change that a little bit and um, also see if you can get an understanding for the other side of the spectrum in, in, in that sense right and um, um, I, th I think it's possible like at least for me a lot of it was was more about um, shyness and and kind of um, yeah just just feeling like I, I wasn't really sure like how how to approach strangers and, and strike up conversations and stuff and and I found that you know especially in an, an environment where where I'm around people who care in general about the same things that I do and who are passionate let's say about python or programming you know it's it's like i'm in heaven you know i'm just running around at pycon 
chatting with people all day long. I'll be completely like floored and burned out at the end of the day, but I'll have a, a blast. And I feel like it's the same for, for many other people when they're surrounded by peers who care about the same subject matter. It's just so much easier to, um, to get along with everyone, right? So um, yeah, just some thoughts on that. Well, um, you also had a question around the work uh, or you know, mentioned something about you're worried that the work might be mundane. Again, I think you have a lot of power in finding work that that you enjoy. You know, if you don't if you don't enjoy the kind of um, uh, let's say you know the super focused like research work where you're spending a lot of time, um, you know, sitting in front of, like sitting in front of a computer screen, like being super focused, maybe doing working on your own a lot or more than in other jobs, then don't look for a job like that. I mean, in computer science, you know, there's there's so much value if you can be the kind of the connecting person that can explain things, and um, that is a great communicator. That is just so 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 very helpful and um you know there's a lot of demand for those kinds of roles you know and there's there's just a ton of opportunity there like if you have programming skills and you don't want to sit in front of a computer all day well, maybe you can become some kind of uh, evangelist for um for for a programming language you know there's there's co big companies especially like amazon google you know, they hire people for exactly that purpose where you go out and you basically give presentations all day and talk about coding, teach people how to code. And that can be very um, rewarding as well. I mean, in, in a certain degree, that's that's what I'm doing right now with my business. And I went f from, you know, we have a three people startup. We're just in the cave, like coding like crazy. And and we we were really sort of um, doing these things on our own because, because that is like the maximum... Um, you know, that, that way you can you can push things forward really quickly if everyone kind of has a specialty and you just crank out code um, to, I went to like just stepping into a more communication uh, related role or managerial role, you know, leading a team and making sure like we we're, we're connecting with all the stakeholders and making sure like things are moving along and, and then also trying to uh, spend like uh, two thirds of my day actually also still coding. And, and now I'm doing this where I'm standing in front of this camera talking, <laughs> the camera talking about coding and giving presentations about Python. And, you know, th there's just, you can change and, and, and look for, um, look for a job. You will find a job where uh, you will be happy with your unique skill set and where you will be, um, you will find, um, satisfaction with the the skills that you you can bring to the table and i'm, I'm sure there's you know some thing where or some job where you will find um where, where you will find yourself extremely happy because it just plays to your unique strength so as far as the work being more or you know less mundane at a bigger versus a smaller company again i think that's something you have to see for yourself you know just you got to be aware the really, really big companies, they can afford someone, they can afford to pay someone or a whole team actually, just to have a very, very narrow and specific focus. Whereas at a smaller team or smaller company, you will often have a wide range of responsibilities. And you know whether that meshes better with your personality and what you're looking for, or not, or you know which one meshes better with, with your unique personality, um, that's just something you need to find out. Like personally, I really enjoy working with smaller companies and um, just because there's so much opportunity for you know, keeping the momentum high and, um, and also like dabbling into different roles. Um, so, but again, you know, it's personal preference and I think, uh, okay, so you know, to summarize this, I think you're gonna be able to find uh, happiness in this, even if you feel like you're you're not an introvert. I, I would say this is more a myth that all programmers are um, introverts or you know extremely introverted, um, where you know to the point where it's where it's very noticeable that every that people are introverted. And um, I would also say that in this field there is mundane work, but there is also awesome work, and you can just do you know. I really think programming is a superpower and you can find something where you can really do th something that is very enjoyable. You know, you can start your own company, you can start your own business or you can work for someone else. And there's a lot of opportunity right now. So I'm really confident that you will find something that, that you will enjoy. All right, so if you found this video helpful, if you're watching, then hit the like and the subscribe button um, and maybe leave a comment below with your own question and I can tackle that in a future video. 
All right. Happy Pythoning. And uh, talk to you soon.